Hi, my name is Michelle Muchet, specialist in international development and social policy, and former Minister of Social Development of Panama. I'm honored to have the opportunity to share with you the experience of my country measuring multidimensional poverty. In this occasion, I'm going to share with you three specific experiences. First, the adoption of the national MPI. Second, the adoption of a national child MPI being the first in Latin America. And third, the adoption of a community-level MPI for the neighborhood of Santana, a urban community from the Panama City. The government of Panama manifested its intention of adopting a national MPI during its participation in the high-level side event hosted by the Multidimensional Poverty Peer Network and the government of Costa Rica in 2015, as part of the United Nations General Assembly. That same year and that same day, the 193 state members of the United Nations committed to adopt the 2030 Agenda. In order to ensure that no one is left behind, the 2030 Agenda states as part of its first goal a multidimensional approach to poverty. In order to achieve this goal, governments must measure multidimensional poverty in order to set priorities and monitor progress. After this statement, the government of Panama, through the Ministry of Social Development and with the support of the Vice President, started conversations with OFI, the developers of the methodology Alcair Foster, in order to identify the steps and resources needed to build a national MPI. The Social Cabinet was designed as the institution responsible of developing the whole process of adopting the national MPI. This means that all the normative decisions were collegiate, ensuring a multidimensional approach of poverty. Then, the Ministry of Social Development, together with OFI, developed the roadmap for adopting the national MPI. This roadmap was approved by the Social Cabinet. In the case of Panama, the Social Cabinet is chaired by the President of the Republic, who delegated these functions on the Vice President, and it's coordinated by the Minister of Social Development. It is comprised by the Ministers of Environment, Health, Education, Housing, and other institutions, and it relies on a multisectorial commission that is comprised by the technical liaisons of all the ministers represented in the cabinet. In addition to the multisectorial commission of the Social Cabinet, an advisory technical committee was created, formed by the Ministry of Social Development, the Ministry of Economy and Finance, and the National Institute of Statistics. The technicians that formed this commission were, were trained in the al Foster method and were the responsibles of advising the Social Cabinet on the normative decisions that were needed to develop the national MPI. The first step of the process was to define the purpose of the measurement, to identify and measure the incidence and intensity of the main non-monetary deprivations affecting living conditions of the Panamanians, and use it as a public policy tool to redirect actions in order to effectively reduce poverty in all its dimensions. Then, a rigorous analysis of the possible sources of information was conducted by the Technical Advisory Committee, ending in the recommendation of using the National Household Survey, applied every year, which will allow a close comparison over time. We also consider the idea of building a specific survey for the MPI. However, beyond the cost that this will imply, the decision was based on favoring sustainability of the measure, having as a source a survey whose application was assured over time. Once the household survey was selected, we start a review process of the existing questions and including some additional ones. After this, the process of designing the measurement began. A wide range of stakeholders were engaged from the beginning. Academics and poverty specialists participated in the selection of dimensions and indicators but also did people living in poverty conditions across the country. Listening to their voices and connecting with the reality was key to developing an index that truly reflected the national context and priorities, and also generated a sense of ownership beyond government. All the normative decisions, such as the unity of identification and analysis, deprivation cutoffs, selections of weights and poverty cutoffs, were informed by the Technical Advisory Committee working in close collaboration with OFI and UNDP, and approved by the Social Cabinet, keeping the President and the Cabinet members periodically updated. In addition, an expert committee was created to validate the accuracy and transparency of the process and its results. This committee was integrated by UNDP, OFI, and the World Bank. Panama built its national MPI at the record time of one year after approving the roadmap by the Social Cabinet. 
It was launched in 2017 by the President of the Republic in presence of Sabine Alcayer from OFI. The National MPI of Panama has five dimensions and 17 indicators. These dimensions are education, housing, basic services and internet access, environment, local environment and sanitation, employment and health. The inclusion of environment and internet access as dimensions are innovative features of the Panamanian MPI. Panama institutionalized the MPI as an official poverty measurement, complementary to monetary measures, through a cabinet decree, committing to estimate it yearly. Hopefully, in a close future, it could be also adopted by law. After a year of launching the MPI, the government, with the support of UNDP, included a robustness statistical analysis as an annex to a report. In 2018, a second estimation of the MPI was released, showing a slight decrease both in incidence and intensity of multidimensional poverty at the national level. All over the process, we were deeply conscious of the fact that discussions about poverty were intimately linked to human dignity, arousing sensitivity and also suspicious about what the real intentions behind a new measurement of poverty could be. But the real fact is that adopting an MPI goes beyond a measurement. It represents a paradigm shift of the way we understand poverty and development itself. This explains why communications, both internal and external, and absolute transparency along the process are critical. In the case of Panama, we develop a comprehensive strategy to ensure that all government actors, political and technical, understood the importance of adopting an MPI and how it would contribute to improve the efficiency and efficacy of the social agenda, but overall, how this is connected to the responsibilities of each institution. This strategy includes presentations within all ministries, training for communications and public relations directors of each institution, and also analyzing the structure and results of the MPI from the perspective of each institution involved in the process and their existing programs. Externally, meetings and conversations with the private sector representatives, NGOs, academia, religious groups, were an important part of the process to recognize the MPI as a paradigm shift that goes beyond governmental terms. Part of the challenge was to make accessible technical concepts and criteria to inform normative decisions to the general public. There were three strategic moments for reach out. First, to communicate the decision and why was it relevant for the country adopting an MPI. Second, to communicate the process itself and the criteria used to build the MPI before it was launched. And finally, to present the results and its relevance for policy. We also provided training and workshops for media and journalists in order to explain in detail what is an MPI and how it could contribute to reduce poverty and promoting sustainable development enhancing an informed debate around poverty. I think I mentioned before that adopting a national MPI is a decision that goes beyond governments. It's a state vision decision. In the case of Panama, the multidimensional approach to poverty has been included as a central part of the National Strategic Plan Panama 2030. That is the roadmap for implementing the SDGs at the national level. It is important to highlight that this strategic plan wasn't developed by the government, but by the National Concertation for Development Council, comprised by 23 sectors of society, including the political parties, what shows an ownership at a country level of this measurement. In addition, Panama went to, through a, a presidential elections in 2019. A couple of months before the elections, all the presidential candidates committed to adopt the National Strategic Plan Panama 2030 as a guideline for the next government plan. In addition, the, da the data and the results of the MPI was a central part of the different presidential proposals. From the policy perspective, a national strategy for reducing poverty was adopted based on the results of the national MPI to coordinate action among ministries to approach poverty in a holistic way in the most deprived zones of the country through systematic interventions. In addition, Panama's Voluntary National Review of Progress to, Towards the Accomplishment of SDGs extensively described its official MPI as one of the principal instruments to progressively improve public policies. It recognizes the national MPI as a principal instrument for shaping public policy. Now, let me refer to the National Child MPI. 
On the launch of the national MPI, the government of Panama announced the commitment of building a national child MPI to reorient policies to reduce child poverty. Considering that the deprivations that affect children are different and more intense than the ones that affect adults. In addition to the support of OFI and UNDP, as we received during the development of the national MPI, this process had UNICEF and Casa Esperanza, a local NGO, as a technical partner. Thanks to the support of Casa Esperanza, the consultation process took into account the voice of the children. A year after, during the 10th Ministerial Forum of Development in Latin America and the Caribbean, hosted by Panama, the country launched the National Child MPI, being the first official child MPI in Latin America. The child MPI has six dimensions, health, education, water and sanitation, housing, child protection, and nutrition. And it has two indicators per dimension and uses nested weights and a poverty line equal to 30%, the same line used for the national MPI, making these two measurements complementary among themselves. The selections of dimensions and indicators was based on the Convention of the Rights of the Child, national legislations and policies, and a large number of consultations. Due to the fact that the data provided by the survey for the nutrition indicator didn't meet the technical requirements set by the Alkire Foster method, the first version of the Shell MPI was launched with five dimensions instead of six, with a commitment to ensure the data will be available for the next calculation. The National Child MPI, as the National MPI, was adopted as an official poverty measurement through a cabinet decree with a commitment to estimate it every other year. Now, I will briefly refer to an experience building an MPI at a community level. Thanks to the widespread awareness of the MPI and the interest from different sectors of society to use this measure to generate impact within their scope of work, we developed a public-private partnership with the members of Santana Lidera, a collective effort by five NGOs and a B Corp to drive positive change and reduce poverty in Santana neighborhood by promoting human development, strengthening community leadership and creating social integration. Under the Minister of Social Development Coordination and Office Oversight, members of Santana Lidera work alongside and were trained by government technicians to survey a representative sample of the neighborhood and the data was later analyzed by the Ministry of Economy and Finance, OFI, and the Ministry of Social Development, and a team from Santana Lidera. This experience allowed development practitioners from different sectors to pilot a highly focalized community measure that would be compared with the national, urban, and provision results, helping steer programs and initiatives based on micro-level data. As a consequence of all these efforts, Panama assumed global and regional leadership by sharing its experience and promoting events for knowledge exchange and collective learning. For example, in 2018, Panama with the Multidimensional Poverty Peer Network hosts a high-level site event at the United Nations General Assembly to discuss innovative uses of MPI. In addition, in 2019, Panama and OFI host a regional workshop on multidimensional poverty measurement to train technicians from governments of Latin America. To conclude, I would like to highlight key decisions for success. First, the buy-in from the highest levels of governments. And when I refer to buy-in, I mean understanding and believing in the power of the tool. Transparency and accuracy, certified by a committee of, of experts. Open and fluid communications, both within government and with external partners. Having the social cabinet and all its ministers as the champions of the process, instead of a sole champion. Bridging political and technical decisions. Ensuring a shared purpose by sensitizing and bringing technical and political players closer to the reality that urges to be impacted through the policies oriented by the MPI. Building capacity and training both inside and outside government and making the most of the multidimensional poverty peer network as a platform for South-South cooperation and learning from previous national experiences. I really hope that the experience of Panama is being useful for your interest. But please, always remember that behind each number, there's a person that feels and dreams. And that the real success behind measuring multidimensional poverty is not measuring itself. It's the use we make of that information to improve the life of people and ensure that we leave no one behind.